your CV or curriculum vitae. This provides a summary of your experience and skills. This is where you list your education, your shows, your membership to the arts. Your CV can include many different aspects, but you don't have to include all that is listed in this area. So let's start. At the top of your curriculum vitae, you should put your name, address, postal code, email, and website. This is essential. You put it all together in one section. Then you create a second section. This is your education. This can include your degrees, even if they're not in art, or any formal art education, such as certificates from college or art classes that have influenced your work. If you are self-taught, mention this. Be proud of this. Creating your own path is difficult and a challenge. Okay, the next part is solo shows. You list them in this manner. You put the date, the name of the show, the name of the gallery, the location, as in the city, and the province or state. Here's some examples. 2019, space, a walk in the forest. And usually you put the title of the show in italics. Then I put Vasa, that's the name of the gallery. Then Hemingway Center, that's the name of the building. And the location is St. Albert, Alberta. That's all you need. Group shows are listed next. So you have first your education, your solo shows. If you don't have any, then you don't have to put them down. Your group shows are next. And you put them down in the same way that you did the solo shows. The date, the name of the show, the name of the gallery, the location or city, and the province or state. Here's another option. Some artists put the title of the exhibition in italics and the rest in regular text. The dates are usually, but not always, in bold. The next part is collections. This is where you list where your work was acquired by bigger organizations. Your neighbor buying your work doesn't count unless he bought it for his or her business or association. Government organizations are acceptable. Large companies are acceptable. Are allowed to say something like private collections in Europe, Australia, or Hawaii. The next part is bibliography and media. This is where you put down any time that you have had a radio interview, a TV interview, or any kind of media interview. If you haven't had any, don't put this section in. The next part is public art. If you've done any public art, like murals or sculpture, this is where you put it down. You put the name of the mural, the fact that it is a mural, you make sure you put down your location. Next section, publications. This is where you've had any interviews done in the newspaper or if you've been included in any books or, or posters that features your artwork. The next part, teaching. If you teach, include any teaching that you've done. You can include teaching for younger people or adults. If you do workshops, list them here. For example, I've been teaching at the Faculty of Education at the U of A since 2012, but I've also been teaching at the uh, Faculté Saint-Jean, which is part of the University of Alberta since 20, since 2009. I've been an artist in the school since 1996. And since 1995, I've been teaching artwork for adults and children at the Cava Gallery. The next part is prizes, grants, and residencies. It could be a residence that you did in another province, in another city, even your own city. You could have gotten a grant or won a prize. Write that down here. The next section is jury positions. Sometimes this is included, but not always. This next section, professional affiliations and volunteer work. If you have volunteered for any art group or association, served on a board, or anything like that, this is where you write it down. So for example, I'm a signature member of the Federation of Canadian Artists and the Alberta Society of Artists. So I wrote that down. I've done committee work for the 
St. Albert Painters Guild, and other groups, and I write that down. Most likely, you won't use all of these categories. Keep in mind that after a while, you will become professional and you will have information for all the categories. A CV should not be bigger than two pages. Readers, it is known, don't last past two pages. However, your CV will grow and it will get longer than two pages. You will then have a long CV that accumulates all your information in one spot. This CV is one that you keep for yourself. This is a record of your work. Sometimes you will dip into this record just for a particular grant that you're applying for or any other position that you might be applying for. And then you will have a shorter CV that you put in all your applications. This is a CV that can change according to the demands of the application. And since most of us cannot keep everything in our brain, that's why you keep the longer CV so that you can dip into it to change it depending on the application. Here's some advice. Get someone to read your CV for spelling errors or any other errors. That's it for this section. Take your time. Write this out. Follow the same steps as you did in part one and part two. Make sure you have somebody read your writing. Make sure somebody proofs for spelling and for grammatical errors. This will take time. Take the time you need to do a good job. And then we'll see you in the next section.